Hello Troublemakers, welcome back to another episode of First and Last, where we watch the first episode of a show, and then the last episode, and then nothing in between. At least that's what I think we do. I took a month off, so now I'm trying to remember everything. I'm, I'm forgetting all the inside jokes. What are our, what are the inside jokes? Scam College, Flynn Rider, are we still doing that? 30 <laughs> year old with a nose ring. Haven't given that up. New Year, same Dylan. Today I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Most most of the shows that I've been doing are uh, like dramas. This is gonna be a comedy. How I Met Your Mother. I figure we'll do the first episode, obviously, the pilots, and then maybe the first episode of season two, you know, just to see the evolution of the, what's been changed. And then we'll go to the ends. We'll do the last two episodes of the show. How does that sound? I'm waiting for your answer. It sounds good? Okay, great. How I Met Your Mother is about a guy telling his kids how he met the mother of his children, them. It'll make more sense when the episode kicks in. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, see. Okay, we're in the future. I remember watching this when it first premiered. I'm not watching all 36 seasons of the show, but I remember watching the first season back when it came out in... Uh, where, where would I find this information? X-Ray? X-Ray! X- what? Uh, trivia? Uh... Ah, uh, uh, information overload. I just want to know when the show aired. Options. Give me the option to find out the year that this was made in. 2006, all right? Two th <laughs> Kids, ah. I'm going to tell you an incredible story. Ah. The story of ah. how I met your mother. Ah, 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 okay. <laughs> Can you tell it's been a month? I don't know what I'm doing here. Will you marry me? Yes, perfect. It's a good opener. Your Uncle Marshall was taking the biggest step of his life. I'm calling up your Uncle Barney. You know what? I, I kind of miss this. As I'm thinking about this, like the premise of him telling the kids how eventually he met his mother. His, no. <laughs> this is how I met my mother. I was born and I out of her I came. But I like that this has like a real solid premise. Because nowadays, to get on like a network show, it's like, what if... It's an offshoot of another television show. I saw a promo for Young Sheldon. Who's watching that? There is like a, a group of 65 year old women who just go crazy for that on Facebook. I can almost guarantee it. And as your best friend, I suggest we play a little game I like to call Have You Met Ted? No, 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 we're not playing Have You Met Ted. Hi, Have You Met Ted? <laughs> it was finger painting day at school and a five year old boy got to second base with me. <laughs> Did you hear the audience member? <laughs> a five-year-old touched my boob. Oh, God, yeah, get it, five-year-old. So do you think you'll ever get married? Well, maybe eventually, some fall day. Simple ceremony, we'll write our own vows. Ban no DJ. People will dance, I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs> Marsh Fuck. As soon as you start closing in on your 30s, not that I would know, I'm only 20. One. As soon as you turn 30, you start thinking about fatherhood and, and other really depressing things that you'd never thought about before. <laughs> Maybe I'll relate to the show more. Before it was all about the comedy. Now it's about like the, the trials and tribulations of a man approaching his 30s. Maybe I'll relate to it more now, huh? Huh? Nothing hotter than a guy planning out his own imaginary oh, wedding, huh? Hey, I think it's cute. But well, you're clearly drunk. <laughs> One more for the lady. Are we canceling him in 2021, two? What year? I, she's drinking. You want to get her more impaired so that you can sleep with her. Cancel Ted Mosby. Oh, they had sex. I promised Ted we wouldn't do that. But like, you know, network sex. Our hair and clothes are messed up, so something happened. How does Carl land a Lebanese girl? How do you speak that loud with him standing right there and not expect him to hear? Just your sitcom logic, I hate this so much. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I, I, I like myself. <laughs> it's a weird setup for where I'm going, but like, you know this about me. Like, I enjoy some Dylan. But one thing I did not like about myself is sometimes I see sexual stuff when there's no sexual stuff anywhere. Keep an eye on the champagne bottle. Pretty easy, right? You can figure it out. Or maybe you can't figure it out, and good for you. And I hope you never do. Keep living with that normal, childlike innocence to you. That is one badass blue French horn. The olive theory is based on my friends Marshall and Lily. He hates olives, she loves them. Perfect balance. You know, I've... <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the way he popped it into his mouth? Watch him, watch him pop, watch him pop. Perfect balance. Why did he get his fingers so deep in his mouth? Like he was like knuckle deep in his mouth. I thought he was gonna do the sexy thing where he's gonna be like, <laughs> you know, just to turn around or something. Did you get turned on with that? <laughs> Probably not, my finger's wet now, I don't like it. Ah. Why did I sniff it? I don't know. What am I expecting to smell? I've had a jar of olives just sitting in my fridge forever. I can take them off your hands. They're all yours. It is on! It is on till that break of dawn. <laughs> they did an extended laugh here. Was that was that joke that good? And it's on to the break of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? 
here. I had a really great time tonight. So? Did you kiss her? The moment wasn't right. So you chickened out like a little bitch. I don't need to take first kiss advice from some pirate. Okay, meet me at the bar in 15 minutes and suit up! So these guys think I chickened out. What do you think? I can't believe you're still not wearing a suit. <laughs> there she is. Ooh, she's cute. Huh. Morning from Metro One News. Yeah, I didn't jump. I'm gonna go kiss her mm -hmm. right now. Dude, it's midnight. As your future lawyer, I'm gonna advise you. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> ah, creepy. Okay. I gotta do what that guy couldn't. I gotta take the leap. Oh. Okay, not a perfect <laughs> metaphor, because for me, it's fall in love and get married, and for him, it's... Death. No, that, yeah, no, 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 don't, don't, don't explain the joke. It's network television. What were your expectations, Dylan? That's a good joke. He's like, I gotta do that. I gotta do what he was not able to. The fucking coward. He wouldn't jump. I will. And you can be like, metaphorically speaking, if you wanna really drive the joke home. But we all get it. It's pretty, it's a pretty obtuse thing to say. Okay, the creepy thing is though, they had a, they had a first date, right? It went pretty well. And now, he saw you on TV, so he's now like tracking you down. And he wore a suit? Is he attractive enough to get away with being this creepy? <laughs> Stop the car. Put, uh, pull over right here. Excuse me? Pardon me? Yeah. Enjoy your coffee. Hey! Hey! So he's a thief too now. Hmm. I don't think he knows her well enough to be this insane. You gotta show your insane stuff after they're a little bit more invested. Kiss her, Ted. Kiss her good. Kiss the crap out of that girl. Mark. That's not funny. I've got five dogs. <laughs> Whoa, she has five dogs in an apartment building? Hi! That's irresponsible. I don't even, I don't want to own one dog. Cause I'm like, that's not a good life for a dog. And these are bigger dogs. She's an irresponsible pet owner. Five in a small New York apartment. Oh, someone call animal control on this bitch. So like those olives with some gin and vermouth? Are you trying to get me drunk? Oh, cancel her now too? Uh, irresponsible. Irresponsible. I think I like your olive theory. I think I like your new French horn. I'd like to blow your French horn. There's a joke there, you missed it. <laughs> Ted, I like to blow your French. How do you not go there? I think I'm in love with you. What? 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 Why did I say that? Who says that? I should just go. I promise you these. Thanks. I love you. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Let's go. We can still make last call. What do you say, Lil? Go ho ho and a bottle of rum. Because <laughs> you're a pirate. Yeah, we get it. You set it up before too. Said Ted's like, I'm not gonna get berated by a pirate. You set up that she's a pirate already. You don't need to. That was like four minutes ago in the showtime. I am so. Okay, eye patch gone. Good night, psycho. Oh, she's not gonna say it back, right? Um, Please don't do say it back. <laughs> I have the perfect joke. Let me just deliver it organically here. Um, how do I get to the F train? Uh, F train. More like um. Damn it, I fucked it up. <laughs> Um, how do I get to the F train? F train? I thought you'd be taking the L train. You know what? That one wasn't that great. If a woman were to bear with me through all this, I think I'd make a damn good husband. Because that's the stuff I'd be good at. Okay, okay so now he's talking marriage. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, if she's like receptive to this, she's got to have some psychological issues. Does that make him a match made in heaven? Or are we just looking at two psychologically damaged people coming together? Because that, kids, is the true story of how I met your Aunt Robin. I thought this was how you met Mom. Will you relax? I'm getting to it. Like I said, it's a long story. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a we have a choice to make here. We can watch episode two, or we can watch season two, episode one. And when I say we have a choice, I mean I have a choice, and you have to live with it. It's a one-sided relationship here. Okay. I make the decisions. And you live with it. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go episode two because I feel like that was loosely wrapped up. But I feel like there is uh, some some strings that are left unstrung. I wasn't in love with her. Okay, I was briefly in love with the abstract concept of getting married. Ah, yeah. See, good. I'm glad he has the self realization. Yeah, it's crazy. After like a couple hours of someone being like, "I l you," I don't even want to say it right now. It feels like too much to say right now. Nice seeing you, Ted. Yeah, you too. Damn it. What? I'm in love with her. Oh no, god damn it. I mean, the most I can handle right now is something casual. This just stays between us, right? <laughs> Oops. I'll be casual. I'm gonna be a mushroom cloud of casual. That's interesting how they did that with like the flashback conversation. When they shot the pilot, this is probably months and months later. But since the pilot got picked up, they brought in a whole writing team to help flesh out all these characters, figure out the whole season's arcs. You can see the writing is already better. So you're gonna ask her out? No, I can't ask her out because if I ask her out, I'm asking her out. So how do I ask her out without asking her out? Okay, I take back what I said about the, uh, the writing. <laughs> there she is. I'm recording from the Razzle
Dazzle Dazzle Supermarket on 75th in Columbus. For Metro News 1, I'm Robin Kabatsky. Ted. Robin, wow. Oh, he's yes. sweating. What are you doing No, you, that's the problem, is there is no coincidence with a guy like this. This guy tracks you down, says he loves you, talks about marrying you. There is no chance encounters. Like, we, we know you're insane. We know your creepy levels are off the charts. You know, it's, it's so funny I should run into you. We're, uh, we're having a party next Friday. I'm going back home next weekend. It's too bad it's not tonight. It is. It's tonight. This Friday. I got it all planned out. She steps through the door. It's interesting, right? So they're they're trying a bunch of different styles. Remember when I talked about the flashback conversation? And now we're doing this. Like, we also have, like, the, the tw this year 2030 reflection on the past and telling the story. So we're ready. We got, like, narrative styles like crazy. And now we're doing this, like, film noir. Well, make yourself at home. And I casually return to my conversation. You're still here, I say. <laughs> like, I don't really care. I like this. This is funny. Hmm, do you know anyone at this party? I work with Carlos. Anyone know what Carlos? Robin's not coming. She's gonna show up. She'll show up. Oh. She didn't show up. <laughs> I'm so sorry I missed your party. I wish your party was tonight. <laughs> it is, no. the party's tonight. <laughs> it's a two day party, cause that's just how we roll. <laughs> So that was Robin. What are you doing to me, man? I got a paper to write. Ah, all right, yeah, the, the second episode is so much better than the first one. She said she works with Carlos. Who's Carlos? I don't know any Carlos. <laughs> I hope that joke comes full circle. Like, they finally realize who Carlos is. What am I gonna do when Robin shows up? She'll show up. She didn't show up. <laughs> they can't have a third party. No. It's Robin. No. There's no third party. It's not funny the third time. I'm jeopardizing my law career so you can throw not one, not two, but three parties for some girl that you just met who's probably not even gonna show up. Where's Robin? Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, fucking hell. Ooh, how do you not know she came in? There's like eight people here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. All right. The show made me cringe, but it was with the show. It was along with it. You know, it's like, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. Okay, yes. You got me. I mean, one of the reasons... Oh, blah, 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 blah. Ah, is that John Bernthal from The Walking Dead and I guess also The Punisher? That's him, right? One of the reasons I threw these parties... Is he Carlos? ...so that I could introduce you to, um... This Carlos. Guy. Robin, this is... Carlos. Mm. You want to get married. And right now there's a million women in New York looking for exactly you. Yeah. But Robin ain't one of them. Right. She's not just one of them. She's the one. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, the one is heading up to the roof. Ooh. What are you gonna do? Nothing. You gotta give up. It's a game. I gotta just give up. Keep playing it. Nope, give up. That's the opposite of what I was saying. Carlos, can you give us a minute? I threw these parties because I wanted to see you. Is this endearing? Like, the answer is no. I know the answer is no. But also, it's she's like into it. But that's because she's been written to be into it, you know? Everything that's bad that's gonna happen between these two is his fault. She's clearly saying like, hey, this isn't gonna work because we don't want the same things. And he's like, I don't care. Hi, have you met Ted? Okay. Okay. I think we've adequately set this up. I think it's now time to jump to the finale. <laughs> Sorry to anyone who was excited for me to watch season two, episode one. I decided to pull an audible and watched season one, episode two instead. Oh, what's that? You were expecting me to, to kick it to an audible ad read? <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Not every time I use the word audible, I'm doing an ad read. Sometimes I just use the word. It's part of my vernacular, okay? So let's go on to season nine. I'm gonna click it. There's no ad read. I'm gonna click the button and play. Oh, no, 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 Danny is sponsored. It is sponsored. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. I tricked you. I tricked you. It's actually sponsored. You had no idea that was coming, did you? <laughs> Audible is the world's leading provider of spoken word entertainment. Audible is the perfect companion. Let me give an example. Today, I'll go to the grocery store. I don't like shopping for groceries. Put on an audiobook. Best hour of my day. Driving to work? Put on an audiobook. Doing chores? Put on an audiobook. Get into a fight with your boyfriend because he's not being attentive enough, so you confronted him about it, but now he's in his field so we cancel plans and now you just don't want to spend the whole night overthinking put on an audiobook audible has thousands upon thousands of audiobooks and each month that you're signed up you get a credit to use on any audiobook across all of audible my next listen is a good girl's guide to murder which just a plus on the title the plot is that there's an open and shut murder case where a guy murders his girlfriend and then murders 
himself. But five years later, a girl is like, I don't think that's what happened. And I am going to do some sleuthing and I'm going to prove my hypothesis with my YA girl deduction powers. Danger, secrets, romance, murder, I'm all in. Sign up with my link, which of course, as always, is audible.com slash Dylan is in trouble. And you will get a free 30 day trial, which means that you get a free audiobook of your choosing. You also want to listen to a good girl's guide to murder? Free. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash Dylan is in trouble, or you can simply text Dylan is in trouble to 500 500. They'll send you a link. And if a suspense thriller really isn't up your alley, then they have so many other titles in so many other different genres as well. So I say try it out for free for 30 days. Get your free audiobook. You get to keep it forever. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Love you, Audible. You're the best. Well, technically I'm the best, but. You're a close second. All right, great. What do I expect to have changed? It is now September 2005. Wait, isn't that when the show started? Are we doing a flashback? I'm confused already. <laughs> I haven't even started the episode. What do I expect? I expect Lily and her husband had some sort of friction. They haven't thought about divorce, but they were separated at one point. Because you need, there's nine seasons. You didn't plan out nine seasons of plot to tell your kids about how you met your mother. You just didn't do it. I know that for a fact. I bet Carlos is still around. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? If Carlos is just now like a regular. So? No, you, you were in. Wait. And I said, have you met Ted and everything? How could that not work? I don't what the fuck is happening? This is following up. Episode two. Did I just skip nine seasons and not miss a goddamn thing? Is this series actually four episodes long with just a bunch of filler? Robin's my new best friend. Nobody bangs her. So the only way you're allowed to hook up with her is if you marry her. Son of a bitch did it. He really did what? You're moving to Chicago tomorrow, huh? Oh, he's leaving the city. He really did it. Oh, he did the, he did the thing. He married her so that he, oh, they haven't had sex even? And he's married, oh. Ah, how is she Aunt Robin? Is Aunt just like a, a, a colloquialism? That's not the right word. <laughs> colloquialism. That is not formal. Yeah, I think that word is the right word. Is that just a colloquialism where they're like Aunt Robin, but she's not actually the aunt? Did I get this right? Oh my God. Colloquialism. Each day that I live, I just find out that I'm smarter and smarter than I ever thought I was. I feel like my brain is growing continually. You guys are gonna see me in three years, my head's gonna be like a, a fucking watermelon. Oh. Is he just, that's not the wife. That's not the mother. Is he just meeting her now? I just realized, who am I gonna high five now? Come on, dude. No, no, I'm being serious. What if I see a pack of lions fighting a Tyrannosaurus? Or better yet, what if I see boobs? Who, who am I gonna high five then? Did the writers give up? What season? Six? Usually it's six. The writers are like, okay, we've run through all the plots and we've put a lot of filler in. We got nothing left. What if I say boobs? Mm. You're a grown up now. You're married. It feels like at this point, the, the his jokes would have matured as well. I don't want to hear season one Barney jokes in season nine, you know? This is so exciting. Let's go talk to her. Her voice sounds familiar. Why are you still sitting here? Why are you still sitting here? She did a kid's show. <laughs> X-Ray! Ah! Who are you? Judith! Oh, she's the woman from Tulsa, of course. Known for intolerable cruelty. Is that a movie or is that just her personality? <laughs> Ten Inch Hero. Uh, adult film? Drake and Josh, maybe? Got my hopes up for nothing. 24 hours from now, my life is gonna be completely different. So strange, you know, now that Ted's gone, you can just feel his absence. Are you kidding me? Why? The camera work just completely obliterates this joke. Like, you could just feel how different it is with him not here, but he's actually here. That's the joke. They did a couple of things visually that were gags that made jokes work when they shouldn't have in the first two episodes. Feel his absence. And here it's just boring. Are you kidding me? What are you doing in New York? Aren't you supposed to be in Chicago? I'm not moving to Chicago. Why? I met a girl. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I thought she was gonna call him a simp. He's a simp. For a girl he just met, he's gonna give up the future that he had? Why does he keep doing this? He goes way too big too soon. He ends up blowing. Oh, what? What? She's just got this superwoman intuition? Like this is the girl? How? How show. This is different. No, I just watched the first episode. It's the same. A hot air balloon. What year? 2015? Oh, wait. So are we in the future now? When did the show end? Nine seasons? I know you guys have been traveling a lot, but you're coming, right? Oh, so now he's... Oh, the timeline jumps are weird. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame the show and not me for skipping. How many episodes is the show? 
Nine seasons, 24 episodes a sh uh, season, roughly like 350 episodes. So like I skipped like 346 of them. Castle. <gasps> Is he a vampire? Oh my God, he's a vampire. Did they have like a vampire skit? Now they put vampires in the backgrounds. They should have had like a vampire episode, like a Halloween episode and a visual gag that now have vampires in the background of New York City. That's a really good idea. I hope they did that. Also, maybe he's just pale. And I shouldn't be one to talk. Robin Chabotsky, Worldwide News, anywhere but New York, apparently. I mean, it makes things super difficult for us, but it's great. I don't think we can get married in September. What? What? Why? Because you haven't had a love story. Unless I just skipped that. I kind of want to fit in my dress. Oh, she's pregnant. Oh, 2016? Marshall, how's your job going? My chair is reasonably comfortable. Short periods of time. Okay, so Barney's unhappy. William here is unhappy. What's his name? Jason. No, that's the actor's name. I'm gonna call him Jason anyways. I don't care. What about you guys? How was Argentina? Great. They didn't go. They're unhappy. They went to therapy instead. We both hate it when I'm gone. We both hate it when I drag you with me. Neither of us is happy. No. Is this just not working anymore? No. Misdirect. If I gave you an out right now. No, misdirect. Reaffirm their love. They just got married though, right? And when we got married, I made a vow. I would always tell you the truth. Oh no, that's not. Is that the vow you make? To love and to hold, through sickness and health. There's no, lying is fair game in marriage. There's no oath. Like you don't put your hand, it's not like a you testify on a court where you're like, ah, wait, what do you do? Left hand, right hand up? I don't know, I've never been caught. I mean, I've never committed a crime. Where you put your right hand up like, ah, I, t I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. He's messing that up. That's, he, he took the wrong oath here. We got divorced. Why? I just sat through your wedding. We hardly hang out anymore anyway. Just promise me, no matter what, we will always be there for the big moments. <laughs> where is this going? Uh, I forgot what the last time jump was. Are we, f yeah, we're okay, we're forward now. My boss only called me three words that meant vagina today. <sighs> what a terrible joke. Also, why is everyone sad? I love this apartment. How do you say goodbye to so many special memories? Go, go! Robin. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. It's It's been forever. Oh, hey. Oh, your, ah, see, this is why you end the show before they all fall out of each other's lives. Do you see how friends ended? They're like, yeah, we're all, we're all about to move on with our lives. So that's where we end the show. I, mean, I feel like this show maybe should have ended at the 22nd episode. However, that ended. So sure, guess who did this at the score? The slutty police officer. Hey, Robin. Didn't see you there. <laughs> Ted still wearing his hanging chat costume? How do you do this, Ted? That better have been a look at Ted lovingly, like she admires him, and then she's gonna remember something she admired in Barney and got and get back with Barney then. But Barney's already picking up other girl's phone number. Oh, I don't like where this is heading. <laughs> oh no, stop. Oh yeah, no, he's with her. The gang is a married couple who I never see anymore. My ex-husband hitting on slutty cops. A guy I probably should have ended up with, with the beautiful mother of his child. Ah. This is all just over then? Ah. Our whole friendship is just over. Ah, why is why is everything so sad? All right, let's just go to the fucking last episode. What do we have to lose? Last episode. Marshall's up. 28, I don't, I don't know what year it is anymore. Settling down is for losers with kids. Legendary! Oh, it's sad because he's not, he hasn't grown up. He's getting left behind by everyone else in his group. Remember back in 2010 when I achieved a perfect week? Seven girls and seven nights, sure. Well, recently I decided to attempt a perfect month. That last girl, number 31, she's pregnant. Ah, uh, so the, the, the show's gonna force maturity onto this character. Yo, this, this is a fucking buzzkill. I always expected these characters just to have a good time, make a bunch of inside jokes I wasn't gonna get, and I was gonna go along with it. But now, just, everyone's just sad, and time is flying by, and I, is this gray hair? Ah, oh, 2020 now. It is grayer. Another big moment for us, and Robin's missing it. I watched all of The Office and wrote down a bunch of notes. But I was like, oh, I'm gonna sit down, and I'm gonna watch the whole thing, and I'm gonna write down all my notes, and I'm gonna make a video, and I haven't made the video yet, and I don't know if I will, but the whole last season, everyone's sad and angry, and they're like, moving on, we should get divorced, we should do this. I get it. When you're on for nine seasons, both this in the office, nine seasons, all that's left are just the loyal fans, and they just wanna have a good time. I've invested at least an hour into the show already. I deserve my happy ending with these characters. Well. It's a girl. Number 31 won't let me in the delivery room. We're gonna need a name eventually. <laughs> it's a girl. Would you like to hear? <gasps> oh my god, it's a girl! And now he's gonna realize that his womanizing ways weren't right all along! Yay! This 
is Ellie. Uh, as soon as he holds her, it's like, uh, he has the epiphany immediately. <laughs> Yeah, lock eye contact. Where's the woman? Are they not gonna show the woman? They're not going to, so that if they wanted to make a spin-off, they could, and they could just cast whoever instead of some extra they brought in for one episode. Oh, yep, here's the epiphany. Big ol' epiphany. You are the love of my life. Uh, okay. Hey. Hi. Wanna oh. join You can't womanize them. What, womanize, sir? I don't know if that's a verb. Let's just pretend it's a verb. He can't womanize them because he has a daughter and now he respects women for the first time in his life. That's for shot. Before lunch on a Thursday, young ladies need to go home, put on some decent clothes, and take a good hard look at your lives. Hey, Daddy. Oh, they can get back together now. Ah, that makes sense. Ah, why would, why would they split up? I don't know. Maybe just to make it more dramatic? No, because then she'd be coming in and he has a kid with someone else, but they haven't showed the other person, so I was supposed to ignore the fact that he has a kid with someone else, but I don't know. She's awesome. Yeah. Daddy's home. Ah. Weird thing to say to your ex-wife who you had a kid with someone else accidentally. Hey, you kids. Do you have any idea what happened right here in this very bar? No. What happened? Just, just all kinds of stuff. A toast. <laughs> Excuse me? You call yourself a comedy show. You have Jason here, turn around to two random people be like, do you know what happened in this bar? Uh, a lot of things. And then that's the end of it? But it was in a sentimental way. I just deliver it in a joking way. You didn't cut to the other people being like, uh, okay. It's a weird thing to say, to stop people being like, hey, do you know what happened here in this very bar? Some stuff happened years ago. That's weird. Unless you pay it off with a joke, like he would do in a comedy show. I don't get it. I Right from the moment I met your mom, I knew I have to love this woman as much as I can, and I can never stop loving her, not even for a second. All right, that's sweet. Every sleepy Sunday afternoon. Aw. And I carried it with me when she got sick. <laughs> They're not gonna kill her, are they? Why make her sick, though? Why be like, oh, we lived so happily, I would never hurt her or leave her alone, ever. And then be like, oh, but then until she got sick, you wouldn't be like, oh, then she recovered. Because then why introduce the element that she got sick? They're not going to kill her. <laughs> and that, kids, is how I met your mother. You made a sit down and listen to the story about how you met mom. Yet mom is hardly in the story. No, this is a story about how you're totally in love with Aunt Robin. And you're thinking about asking her out and you want to know if we're okay with it. I can't believe this. Huh? Mom's been gone for six years now. Ah! This is so wrong. Also, you're in the year 2030 and you're gonna call someone up? I don't I don't use the phone in the year 2022. I haven't made a phone call in like four years, okay? You're not gonna tell me that he's about to pick up the phone and dial some numbers. He should, in the year 2030, he could probably like telepathically call her with the microchip. Cause show up with the trombone. Yeah, call back, five dogs, she'll look out the window. It's easy to see that stuff when you just watch the pilot. Hey! So I'm just assuming that um, they didn't introduce the love interest until the second to last episode, it appears. AKA the titular character, but the story is actually a misdirect. It's actually about a father basically asking approval from his kids to date someone else now that their mom is dead. As I go through the episodes from season nine, on their way to Long Island for their wedding weekends, Robin and Barney come across a startling family discovery. Okay, so I assume the ninth season for 20 episodes was all about the wedding. And then the next episode, they're like, oh yeah, we got divorced. So you spent a whole season setting up a wedding only for you to be like, yeah, it didn't work out. I, maybe it worked. You know what, maybe it worked. Well, who am I to say? Mr. Skips a lot. I'd like to thank you for, for joining me on this journey. Let me know if you like this with the sitcom because there's a couple other sitcoms that I would be interested in, in doing this with. Can't always be CW shows. Or I could actually. I could do Arrow, I could do Flash, I could do a lot of them actually. <laughs> Thank you to Audible for sponsoring me. I appreciate you Audible. You know I love you. Come over here. What's my slogan? Do I have one? How do I end videos? I will um, see you later. Bye bye. Toodles, that's it.